What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is help you understand how to add and subtract mixed numbers. Now we're going to go ahead and do this by working through five different examples to help you out through the process. I hope you enjoy. Anytime you guys are adding um, fractions, just a quick little review. If I have um, three halves plus five halves, all right, remember as long as the fraction, and this is for going to be true for adding or subtracting, so I'm not going to go for through both of them. But remember, whenever you're adding fractions, as long as the denominator is the same, we just combine our numerator. And that would be the exact same with subtracting, all right? Um, please just remember, ladies and gentlemen, you have to simplify your fraction. 8 divided by 2 is reduced down to 4, okay? Now, in this case, we have a mixed number added to a fraction. So the first thing we need to do is convert our mixed number into a fraction. So to do that, we multiply our denominator times our whole number, and then add that to our numerator. So my improper fraction would now be 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I have 7 thirds plus 1 fourth. But now they do not have common, they do not have common denominators, so I can't just add 7 and 1. I have to get common denominators. So to do that, we need to determine what is the least common denominator. Now, the foolproof method to do this, if you can't do it in your head, is just list the multiples of each denominator. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And we want to find the smallest number that they both share, which you guys hopefully can see is 12, right? So that means we want to get our answer is going to have a denominator of 12. But before we can do that, we need to make sure we have common denominators. So I need to see what do I need to multiply 3 to get to 12. Well, that will be 4. And since I need to produce equivalent fractions, I'm going to multiply by 4 over 4. For 3, I need to multiply by 3 over 3. And then as we go through, just like we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So therefore, I have 28 over 12 plus 3 over 12. Add those up, 28 plus 3, since they have the same denominator, I can now combine their numerators. 28 plus 3 is 31 over 12. This would be the exact same if you were subtracting, except instead of adding, you'd just be subtracting the numerators. Make sense? Whenever we're adding mixed numbers, we always want to convert them back over to improper fractions. And to do that, there's a kind of step-by-step -step process that I want to make sure you guys are all aware of because we're going to be using this over and over and over again. You guys are going to see mixed numbers quite a bit. So we want to make sure we can always complete, compute mixed numbers as an improper fraction so we can apply our operations. So to do that, what you're simply going to do is take the denominator and multiply it by your whole value. So 4 times 5 is 20. Then you're going to add that sum, or that product, to your numerator. And when you do that, you're still going to leave it over 4. So 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21 over 4. Then I do the same thing over here. So that's 21 over 4, plus 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 2 is 8. Okay. So now I've written it as improper fractions. And now I have 21 over 4 plus 8 thirds. However, what we notice here is we have two un uncommon denominators, right? They're not like denominators. So Stephen, what we'd want to do in this case is we want to compute the, great, or the least common denominator. That means the smallest number that both 4 and 3 divide into. So to do that, what we need to do is one easy way to do that is just to multiply your denominators 4 and 3. That's going to give you 12. We both know that 12 is divisible by 4 and divisible by 3, right? However, the next example I'll do, you'll notice that not always just multiplying denominators is the best or fastest or easiest way to determine the least common denominator. But we'll do that next. Um, so in this case, I need to multiply both of my denominators to get them to be 12. So I'm going to multiply this denominator by 3 and this one by 4. But it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, when you're multiplying to produce a common denominator, they multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same number. The reason being is we want to produce what we call equivalent fractions. Qu fractions that have the same value but are in different form. For instance, six, uh, sorry, 3 over 6 is equivalent to 1 half, right? Right? They're equivalent fractions. Um, so now I need to multiply across. So when we multiply, we just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 3 times 21 is 63 plus 12, over 12, plus 8 times 4 is 32 
over 12. Now I have common denominators, and I can multi or add my numerators, which would be 95 over 12. Now I just need to look at what numbers are divisible by both of these to see if I can simplify this. So 12, I know the numbers that I can divide out of 12 would be a 12, um, 6, 3, and 4, and 2. But none of those are divisible by 95. So therefore, that is going to be my simplified answer. Cool? Okay. If you want to put it back into the number, into a mixed number, yeah, absolutely. Um, to do that, to do that, what you determine is divide 12 into 95. How many times does 12 go into 95 without a remainder? Seven times. 7 times 12 is going to be 80, 84. So it goes in there 7 times. And then you have 84, right? It goes in there 84. So then you subtract 95 minus 84, which is 11. So 11 would be your numerator over 12. And, and you can always check your work again. Um, 7 times 12 is what? 84 plus 11 is 95. How to subtract mixed numbers when you change your, both your mixed numbers to improper fractions. There's two ways we can solve this problem. One is to subtract our wholes and then subtract our fractions. The other way we can do it is actually to convert both of these into mixed numbers. Real quick, I'll show you how to convert a mixed number to an um, improper fraction. What we like to do is we multiply our denominator times our whole number and then add our numerator. So I get 23 over 4. How I can double check to make sure I did that correctly, I say 4 goes into 23 five times with the remainder of 3. So if I'm really used to um, converting into improper fractions, this would be the method I would want to take. I would say 4 times 5 is 20 plus 3 is 23 fourths. Minus. 16 times 2 is 32, plus 3 is 35 sixteenths. Now, my next step is I need to go and subtract these two fractions. What I notice is their denominators are not the same. When our denominators are not the same, we know that we have to make their denominators the same. So we have to find the LCD. Remember, the LCD is their least common denominator. So what we need to find is what is the multiple of 4 and 16, what is the smallest multiple or the you know, least common multiple, that they, have in, um, that they have in common. So you look at this, you say, all right, well, I know 4 goes into 16, so our LCD is going to be 16. So I already have 16 here. I don't need to do anything else to 16. However, I, need, I do need to multiply this 4 times 4 to get me 16. And I need to make sure that I multiply the denominator and the numerator by 4. So I do 4 um, times 23. And if I don't have a calculator, I'm trying to think in my head, well, I know 2 times 23 is going to be 46. And then 46 times 2 would be 92. So I have 92 over 16 minus 35 over 16. Then now I have the same denominator. I can simply subtract my numerators, and my denominators will remain the same. 92 minus 35 will become 57 over 16. My last step is I want to see is there any number that I can simplify that means goes into 57 and goes into 16. As I look at these numbers, I look at the, denom or the, the multiple or the factors of 16 and I notice none of the factors of 16 go into 57. Therefore, this is simplified. That is how you subtract mixed numbers when you convert both of your mixed numbers to improper fractions. When converting a mixed number to an improper fraction, you take your denominator, multiply it by the whole number, and then add the numerator. So to find, or I guess the numerator in the improper fraction, you take your denominator, multiply it by your whole number, and add your numerator. So 7 times 3 is 21, plus 6 is 27. 27 is now my new numerator, and I'm going to always keep the denominator. Okay, so 3 and 6 sevenths, which is a mixed fraction, or a mixed number, 3 and 6 sevenths, we can rewrite as the improper fraction of 27 over 7, which we're always going to want to prefer. So I don't even like mixed numbers at all. But in case we do have a problem that involves that, that's how you convert. Over here, 
I have 7 times negative 1, which is negative 7. Oh, well, <laughs> close here. All right, um, confusing here. First of all, plus a negative, right? Didn't we talk about how that's kind of like a subtraction problem? Yeah. Right? OK. So let's just rewrite this as a subtraction problem. And when you're doing mixed numbers, um, do not attach that negative sign with it. OK? Because basically what we're doing is how can we just rewrite 1 and 1 seventh as a mixed number? So to do that, we do 7 times 1, which is 1, plus 1, which is 8. So that's going to be minus 8 sevenths. So if you guys can kind of disregard at that point in time, um, disregard kind of the, the negative sign. Because if you added the negative, that would be 7 times negative 1, which would be negative 7 plus 1, which is negative 6. 1 and 1 seventh is not, is not 6 over 7. That's 6 sevenths. That's not improper. So it's 8 sevenths. Now we can just go ahead and subtract. Whenever you're subtracting fractions or adding fractions, when you got to make sure you have common denominators, which in this case we do. And then you subtract the numerator from the other numerator. So 27 minus 8 is going to be 19 over 7. Done. Fine. All right? On this example, we have some mixed numbers, right? So now in this case, what we want to do is remind ourselves how to convert to mixed numbers. <laughs> it's OK to add and subtract mixed numbers um, when we have the same fraction. But in this case, we don't have the same fraction. Uh, so therefore, we're going to want to convert them to improper fraction to apply our operation. So to apply your operation, or to convert from mixed number to an improper fraction, first thing I want you guys to do is forget about the negative sign. Think about it as a parenthesis. OK, Andre? We are going to apply the negative sign at the end, not right now. So the first thing that you're going to do, is there a cup problem, Jamie? You okay? No, okay. The first thing you're going to do is take your denominator and multiply it by the whole number. All right? Then you take that number and then you add it to 2. So when doing this, what I have is 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. Everybody follow me? Yes. Okay. So that's going to be a negative 11 over 3 as you keep the original denominator the same. Then I do the same through here. Again, forget about the negative sign for a second. Just do 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 plus 3 is, um, 8 plus 3 is 11. So it's minus 11 over 4. Then again, though, we need to get common denominators, right? So you can see your common denominator of 3 and 4 is going to be 12. So I'll multiply by um, 4 over 4, 3 over 3. And therefore, I obtain negative 44 over 12 minus 33 over 12. Um, remember, guys, negative minus a negative is basically like adding. Just the way I look at it is negative 1 minus 2. If you owe a dollar and then you borrow two more dollars, you now owe $3, right? So we're basically, we're like adding these, all right? Minus a negative, you're basically like adding these, but you know the answer is going to be negative. So 44 plus 33, think about this also. The other thing, too, to remember when you're dealing with your negatives, have the negatives in the denominator. Your numerator, I mean, it doesn't matter where the negative really is, but when applying the operation, you're going to want to think of this as a negative 44 and a negative 33. So negative 44 minus 33 is going to be a negative 77 over 12. Um, now, 30, 60, this one can be divided. All right, so now, in this case, we want to be able to see, all right, can I divide it by common terms, right? Is there common numbers that, can I simplify this further? So the first thing, again, I always do is look to it, is it even? And for Tansy, 77 is not even, right? So I can't divide the top and bottom by 2. But the next one I look for, is it odd? And I mean, can I divide it by 3? Well, we know 3 goes into 12 four times, right? And 3 goes into 77. Well, let's think about it. 3, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that would be 16, that would be 7. So 3 does is not a divide. 77 is not divisible by 3. I'm not aware of any other number that. Goes okay. in 7, but 11 doesn't go into 12. 
so that'd be a problem. Um, so that's going to be your final answer. No. <laughs> <laughs>